So it comes with a bag, insulated bag. It's got latches to lock down and you can padlock them if you need for dual security. It's a fairly thick insulated lid with two compartments and they have these covers on them to keep the cool in. This is a small combination. As you can see, I'm a chocoholic. So it's got some drinks and some chocolate in here. And currently we are looking at a three quarter fill. And we've added some baskets in here to accommodate just pulling out food um, when we are trying to get to the very bottom. As you can see, it's got a really large basket. Today we've converted this large compartment to uh, a freezer. And we added, like I said, these baskets just for ease. I mean, right now these have got bread in them. We can stack these on top so we can just pull out a couple of things opposed to pulling out a whole pile of individual items. And if you have a look down inside, you can see how big the freezer part is. Now this is also a fridge. It's segregated from the other compartment. It is a freezer if I wish it to be. And it is a fridge if I wish it to be. Now I can convert this whole basket, like I said, and make it into a fridge. The operations on this system can be fridge, freezer, fridge, freezer, two fridges or two freezers. The other side has to accommodate the uh, compressor. Again, it's got a basket for easy removal. As you can see, I've got our drinks. And if you have a look inside that compartment, it's half as deep. But again, I can pull the basket out and right now it's configured as a big freezer and a little fridge. We'll get back to this a little bit more as we carry on with this uh, review on the unique 80 liter fridge freezer. So currently, I have the large segment set up as a freezer and the right side is set up as a fridge. You can see the snowflake in the top. That is an accelerated function. What that means is the snowflake can cool down this freezer fridge super fast. It's like a rapid cooling setting. Um, to turn it off, all we have to do is press this button and hold it. And it turns it off. Once you're down to temperature, you don't really need this on. It shows it being set to 24 volts. Uh, I've plugged it into the main, so this is 110 voltage coming in. When I'm on the road, this will be set to 12 volts with a cigar lighter. And I'll go over the accessories when I get them out. With this button, I can set the left side temperature. The right side temperature, as you can see, the fridge is set to two degrees and currently it's at four degrees. If I press and hold the set button, you can see the voltage. That's my too low voltage. So right now it sees 24.2 volts. It's actually a default at 21 volts that it will turn itself off. Now, if I was on 12 volts, it's currently set to 10.8 volts and it'll see source voltage uh, via the 12 volt circuit, which for me around about 13.6. And if it gets down to 10.8 volts, it'll turn itself off as well. It's a Danfoss compressor. It's a Danfoss compressor, which means that it is a uh, highly, highly reputable. So they say, uh, I don't really know much about them. It does have a tilt warning on it of 30 degrees and uh, I've used it once for a weekend trip and it worked fantastically. Um, we're gonna try it out for two weeks, purely on uh, two 12 volt batteries 
and from there we're going to work on solar panel 200 watts in the sun and we're going to see if this lasts for 14 to 16 days which is our vacation uh, we do not have any electricity up there it's just purely on what we can regenerate from the sun traveling through our batteries it draws apparently 2.7 amps when it's running it is cyclic so this is going to be way better than what we had with our two coolers the two electric coolers pulled eight amps between them and the math on that was about two and a half days for my uh, what was it 474 amp per hour batteries that I had um, this is going to be running completely on 242 amp per hours uh, with hopefully between 9 and 12 amps being regenerated back into the batteries from the sun. 2.7 amps extends, that's full, if I was to run that for 24 hours, that means that I would get around about six and a half days, so that's huge savings for us. Um, but again, with solar adding to that, that just means that it's infinite currently. Again, 2.8, 2.7 amps is cyclic, so I worked on about 18 hours of runtime uh, with this compressor which to me um, is extending my time even further out. So it's greater than, you know, nine days, which I'm really impressed with. Um, I haven't tested the amps when it's actually down to temperature and it's been running. So that's going to be interesting to look at. Right now, you can hear the fan running. And it's not super loud. So it's all set up. It's been running for about 16 hours, purely on the batteries. Running minus seven and minus one. Minus seven being the large compartment, which is now a freezer. And it's just been running for a small period of time to minus one in the fridge. Uh, albeit I've set the fridge to plus one. Contents of the fridge. said it has the two compartmental lids which is great and it's full so if I can pull this out as you can see got all the meat at the bottom we made uh, room for these baskets so that we can actually put more items in there to stop us from pulling out individual items It's got the drinks in it. So again, smaller fridge. Everything is lovely and cold. And, uh, the reason why there's not much in this fridge is because we did bring the big trailer with us. And that has a propane fridge freezer in there as well. So we have a lot of our uh, fresh vegetables and uh, milk and stuff like that actually in the trailer. Um, so we're trying to run this, see how it goes. Um, not quite sure what's happening uh, with my solar right now. I should be running 9 to 12 amps. I seem to be about just under 5 amps. Um, but I see that my battery is probably full because of the trip yesterday and we haven't really used much which tells me that this new fridge freezer uh, by Unique is really pulling you know, under the 2.7 amps. And again, it's cyclic depending on temperature. So right now, uh, the compressor's on and off, on and off, on and off, which means that it's using less time and less amperage. And then when it's cold, it's also gonna be using less amperage because it's only having to, to keep it at a set temperature. It's not drawing it right down from uh, air temperature, which today is 35 degrees. Uh, down to minus uh, seven degrees So I think the batteries are full uh, my my check panel in the trailer says I'm full and uh, So I think it's floating the voltage in the amperage. So it's not utilizing everything that's coming in from the panels right now We'll keep you informed. We are in and out of the fridge all the time So these are like, you know six seven eight nine ten times a day It's not a uh, leave it as it is for a, a week once a day opening and we'll let you know how it goes and we'll let you know how the batteries go. It's a big fridge freezer for sure, uh, 80 liters, and uh, seems to be working reasonably well so far and I uh, can't complain.
So, unique. 80 liter cooler. Day two and a half. Batteries have not been dead yet. Solar panels have been working. I slowly figured out what was going on with my panels. Um, batteries in the trailer still alive, full. And the cooler's still working. Tonight's another test uh, to see. Um, I had this issue with the, the uh, power. It kept telling me on a flat battery or the battery was dying. But then when you went into the interior of it, it actually said that my battery was set to default 10.8 volts. Uh, on the compressor side when it pulls the load so I load it right down to 10 volts because I know the batteries that I've got on board are strong enough to deal with it we've been opening and closing it filling it up with uh, drinks shall we say and they're staying cold we have switched the large um, compartment over from a freezer to a fridge and the small compartment from a fridge to a freezer <laughs> Apparently. Awesome bottle of wine by Dirty Laundry. Anyways, enjoy it. Pick it up locally in the Okanagan. Don't normally do the alcohol thing, but uh, we're on vacation. So the nice thing is she does have, and she being Sandra, has four bottles of wine standing upright in that main compartment. I've probably got about eight cans of uh, drink whether it's pop or beer in there and we beer. have food in there as well and like I said we switched it over to a fridge set the, the temperature to zero because uh, sort of plus two wasn't really cutting it and we learned by a mistake when it comes to a freezer that the uh, freezer compartment when we set off I'd set it to minus two but when we loaded it Sandra was saying it's not really working it was warm ish and the products that we had inside were starting to thaw. Then I realized, hmm, being an idiot that I am, we reset it then to minus uh, 10, and now everything's been perfectly frozen and cold. It's awesome. So there are good parts about this review so far. I'm not saying they're all good, um, because we had so many issues at the very beginning, uh, of which you've already heard about uh, during my rant. But again, we're going to give the benefit of the doubt with this product and we're going to keep going. We're here for two weeks. It's going to be a long winded video, um, but we are impressed with what it's doing so far. So I'm just going to show you my battery panel and what the trailer's battery level is after a very dull day. And then I'm going to give you a panoramic view of where we are uh, stationed. And from there, we'll go through the solar array back down to the uh, MPPT controller and the voltage there and then down to the unique cooler. So my battery level is at two thirds and that's on a dull day today and we're going to go now and have a look at and we've done nothing untoward when it comes to uh, saving power. We've still used the regular power and it's been, like I said, a very dull day today, no sun. I've probably been kicking about two amps back into the batteries. So this is our campsite. Uh, Vernon, BC, at the Kaluli Bay Provincial Campground. You can see by the clouds, it's been like this on and off all day and it's been raining. This is our camp setup for the next two weeks. And we have our 200 watt solar array. It's aimed at the sun right now, uh, more westerly. The MPPT controller. And right now, I don't know if you can see that properly. It says it's snoozing, it hasn't seen much light. The batteries, according to this, are 12.4 volts. And then we go through to the unique cooler. And we have a look at what we're doing here. The fan is turning, so the compressor is running. And we're at 12.2 volts. 
The batteries have not. The batteries have not been bleeping last night. Um, so what I did, as I, I, I think I said earlier, uh, I may be repeating myself because this video is probably going to go on for the next two weeks, on and off. Uh, we've been going in and out of this cooler regularly. It's not one of those, let's try it once a day. We're just using it as a complete uh, household fridge. Like I said, this is a test run. Uh, it's designed more for the off-road trailer. So currently, uh, dim light, still using, we've converted the big one over to a fridge uh, or the big compartment and the small compartment to a freezer. Everything is frozen, everything is cold. Uh, it's doing its job, it's actually running perfectly. We've added a big ice block that was thawed out and today we bought four of these dollar store or dollar fifty uh, reusable small ones and these only got put in earlier today so they're not frozen and we're just trying this out because the theory behind this is once it's in the car we are going to keep a small cool bag with ice blocks in it. And then our uh, freezer is still, we're not quite empty yet. We're starting to diminish some of the food. And then um, we will be uh, scaling this down to probably drinks and seeing how it goes. But everything is still cold. Give you a height comparison and a size comparison. This fridge freezer comes up to my mid thigh. If I scale myself down to this, it's a big fridge freezer. Again, made in Ontario, uh, made by Unique, 80 liters, and uh, it runs off 12, 24, and 110 volts. So, fridge, freezer, fridge, fridge, freezer, fridge, freezer, freezer. The reason why we got this is because we want to test it uh, and again we can literally turn off any compartment so we can just run one compartment. This thing is huge. Uh, is it designed ready to go for off-roading? That's the whole point of this. I know we're traveling with the big trailer here um, but we wanted to try it out as a backup because we already have a fridge and a freezer in this one but we wanted to see how this compares over two weeks with solar charging up the batteries and then seeing uh, how long it lasts. Hi guys, welcome to day seven. Let's have a look at the cooler and the accessories that it comes with and uh, bang for your buck. Um, it's been working flawlessly. Uh, we lowered the voltage down to 10 volts and from now on or from three, four days ago, we've not had any bleeping saying that the compressor couldn't kick start. Um, because of the low voltage uh, drain that it creates or the amperage drain that it creates um, but it's been working absolutely fantastic can't grumble about it whatsoever right now thanks due to the 200 watts of solar that we have as well the battery on the trailer has basically not died once it's gone down to two-thirds and that is it um, when I say down to two-thirds, that's remaining left in the batteries. Solar panels have regenerated that uh, electricity within about three, four hours, first thing in the morning with the sun. But again, we've had continuous sun. So, what does this wonderful, unique 80 liter fridge freezer, freezer fridge, fridge fridge, freezer freezer come with? It's not cheap. Comparative to the ARB, the angles, all that, it's definitely cheap, comparative. You are getting more size, larger literage than you are with the angle and the ARB. Downsides would be the amperage. 2.7 is what the uh, booklet comes up with, whereas an angle and a, an ARB would be probably 0.8 to 1 to 1.5 amps. But realistically, uh, once you've got off compressor, this thing does not drain anything. It's been phenomenal. So this is a good review so far on this device 
considering we started off with um, a really sort of poor start to the way that we received it. Again, bang for your buck. What do you get? You get everything. You don't need to go out and buy other things to go with this. So let's have a look. It comes with this cover. Zip off, top. You can take it out. We have never taken it out of this bag yet. It has its own feet underneath of the cooler and it comes with feet on the bag underneath. It's too heavy right now to show you that. Lockable clasps. Stainless steel screws and hardware. Small handles, enough to get one hand in. Uh, you can secure tie down from these handles down to your locking points of your vehicle. It comes with the, I call them cigar chargers, uh, 12 volt supply from the input to the device or the cooler up to, and I've created an extension cord, I created about 10 to 12 uh, feet of extension so that I can run it from the batteries. And an adapter that goes from 12 volts to 110. So you just plug this into that adapter. They give you these Velcro straps so that you make sure that the joint is secure and tight. And it also comes with an LED that tells you that it is on. So there's no getting two plugs. Some devices show you two different plugs, 110 and a 12 volt. That's not there. So all in all, you get a lot with this. You also get another cigar charger, another female, like this top one, that goes to alligator clips, crocodile clips, uh, clips that clamp to your battery. And they are already connected to my batteries and uh, are under the covers, so it's a bit challenging to get to. So when it comes to bang for your buck, you are getting AC charging, DC charging, alligator clips to your battery, a bag, one cable to go into the side of the uh, fridge freezer. You are getting two separated compartments. You can run it one or you could run both together. You can configure it as we keep saying in this to fridge, freezer, freezer, fridge, 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 freezer, freezer. What are the cons? The only con that I can come up with is it's 80 liters. It's big, it's tall, but this is a product for off-gridders, not just overlanders. So it is a big product. Right now, I'm really liking this product. The ARB ones are nice, 35, 45, 55 liters, but you're talking 12, 13, 15, 1700 dollars worth. The price that this came in with was 850 plus tax. 850 is probably the most expensive fridge freezer I'll ever buy. I wouldn't even buy one in my house for that much, but we do a lot of traveling and we don't always take the travel trailer, which means that's a propane and a 110 voltage. We do go with the off-road trailer and we do go car camping a lot. So to take this device is absolutely a necessity for what we want to do, okay? So yeah, this is a pretty good bit of kit. So customer service, we had a few issues. They've dealt with that. It took a while to figure it all out, but they dealt with it. So I can't really grumble about the customer service. Once they got on it and they dealt it and they figured it all out, we got what we needed to replace everything. So good for Unique for getting that out to us. Um, what else can I think of? The temperature here, it's been outside in its bag for the last seven days. We're here for another seven days, so I'll tell you what happens at the end of it and make sure that it works. The last two days of our trip here, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna connect the solar. I'm gonna leave everything fully charged up the night before, and we're gonna run this fridge, albeit with the lights inside the trailer, 
and stuff like that. And we're gonna see how the batteries fare. We're running two six volt batteries with a capacity of 242 amp hours. So we should have a good test for the last two days because that really would be a two day weekend that we go overlanding. We're on day 10. Last night, I was woken up to a bleeping noise and it says that the voltage was too low for the compressor to start. I was like, hmm. So I pulled the plug, turned it off, woke up this morning, had the solar panels regenerate uh, what they can and uh, plugged her back in and she ran fine. What I think is happening is we have chipped away at the uh, battery capacity over 10 days. The solar panels are working good. We're banging out, you know, eight to nine amps, but it's not solid. We're not uh, putting it in, you know, eight hours a day. So I couldn't tell you exactly how many eight amps we're putting in over hours, but obviously it was enough now to lower the capacity in the battery that like last night when I woke up around 2 a.m. here in this bleeping, I had a look at the, the display on the fridge, and when it was trying to cycle, it went below the 10 volts. I've been looking at the input to the batteries from the solar controller, and it's varying between 11, 7, and 14 volts, but again, today has been cloudy for the afternoon. Yesterday was cloudy in the morning, so we're not getting the full sunshine we were in the first seven days. Let me show you the voltages. Um, albeit today, I've or right now, I've run the car to act like a generator to throw more voltage and amperage back into the battery and then see where we go. That is the voltage currently with the compressor running that the fridge is seeing. So let's have a look at the input that I'm seeing via the solar controller, even though the car is running and acting like a generator. Ignore the fact that it says it's sleeping, but you can see there it is actually 13 volts. Zero amps because the solar is uh, not working because the sun has gone in and it's super cloudy. So the batteries are seeing, sorry, the solar controller is seeing 13 volts. I did the math on these batteries and they should have lasted about three and a half days with a 242 ampere hour capacity. We're now into day 10. So is it working? The solar array is working, but we have been chipping away at our capacity within the battery. I don't know if I'm going to have enough charge in the batteries without, you know, if I was at home, I'd put a battery charger on them, fully charge the batteries, and then do a full test, which I'm going to do when I get home with the off-road trailer, and I'm going to have 474 ampere hours of battery capacity because I'll put my four 6-volt batteries in circuit. And then what we'll do is we'll measure it, and we'll leave the fridge running at home for two or three days. We'll open and close, open and close, open and close, but there'll be no connection to solar, and we're going to see if we can get through um, three days. Now the math on that, it says it's seven and a half days. Um, that's using 24 hours of continual use at 2.7 amps. Don't forget this is cyclic. It's been a good test so far. I'm not dismissing it. Uh, the fridge is working well, everything's cold, even though I turned it off at about 2 a.m. and re uh, switched it on again at around 10 a.m. Everything was still frozen, everything was still cold, nothing thawed out, the seals are good, the, the, uh, the foam insulation in the walls, the ceiling and the, uh, the floor are obviously working really well. Morning everybody, 
the morning of day 14 uh, with our solar array test with our off-grid 80 liter uh, fridge freezer. I think I've figured out some of my problems with the batteries. Uh, it only took 14 days, but anyway. Now, day 11, uh, I raised the voltage float level on my controller from 13.7 to 14.5. And yesterday pretty much was an overcast all day. And then today is gonna be an overcast all day. You just saw that quick video shot of this beautiful area that we're up in, in Kaluli Bay. Um, Okanagan, British Columbia. Um, so I floated the voltage, seems to be better. The arrays seem to be working. I was still pushing in, you know, nine amps. And the batteries haven't gone down to a point where the um, fridge freezer was bleeping at me. So now parts the test where we're gonna have a couple of days of overcast. I'm gonna leave the array connected just to see if it does anything. I'm expecting it to sleep most of the day because of the cloud. And then we'll see if the batteries regenerate. If they don't regenerate from anything from the solar array, that means that we're living off of what capacity is inside of those batteries. And we'll see how long the uh, fridge freezer will last without bleeping. Now, we're here for another two days. This is a 16 day vacation. We're not sure if we're staying for the full 16 due to the weather. Um, like I said, it's gonna rain. It rained pretty much most of the evening yesterday, all night. Uh, it's dry this morning, but it's overcast. So we're gonna take what we can. It's a long vacation for us and uh, we're gonna enjoy it. So we'll feed it back on what we get with the, the fridge freezer. We uh, transferred the fridge freezer component to both compartments being two fridges now as we've eaten through most of our frozen product. Um, this will be, this will adjust how much electricity it uses as well because it's not going to be cycling down to minus nine to keep everything frozen. So both fridges are set to minus one, hopefully keep everything around that, you know, plus two to zero. And uh, we'll see where it goes. I mean, if I'm going off-roading, overlanding, um, taking the fridge freezer with us, the highly likeliness of them both being set to fridges is quite high because we're only going to be going away between uh, two and three days. Um, so again, we'll see. That will adjust what's going on with uh, the consumption of our amper hours. So day 16, uh, pretty overcast day yesterday. Last night I turned the panels off so we could pack up and fridge lasted. No more issues with the fridge so far. The next big test, and I'll carry that on, is going to be uh, four six volt batteries with our off road trailer. We're going to use that for about three days. We'll open and close the fridge, freezer, set it all up, and we're going to see how that does comparative to uh, having a solar recharge all day um, for 16 days. Yesterday we were kicking in about two to two and a half amps, so we were getting a trickle charge in comparative to the uh, compressor kicking in at about 2.7 amps. Um, never had a problem all night or the last, uh, sorry, day 14, we had that one hiccup. 15 was good and 16 right through to just. It's back in the car now uh, with the remote uh, temperature check in the front cigar lighter. And then we'll, obviously it's gonna be fully good all day today traveling home. So, so far it worked well. Size is a little bit heavy and tall, but you know, it depends what you want it for. I mean, this is, like I said, for off-gridders and we're trying it out as an overlanding fridge. So all in all good so far, and we'll check it out uh, with the next trailer uh, at home, just no charge, fully charged batteries. And we're just gonna open and close it, fill it full of stuff and let it go.